everyone. How are our friends? How's everybody doing today? Oops, I turned the volume down. Hold on. Just kidding. There we go. Now we're back. Thumbs up. I got some thumbs. I saw some thumbs up. Mary, What's Bonnie, that? OG, Peter, thumbs up. Kathy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, oh, hi, Bonnie. Nice to see you. Okay, let's get started. We, uh, Brooke and I are here together. This doesn't happen too often. It's the so. best. It's the best. <laughs> you get both of us together today uh, on the same screen, not different boxes. <laughs> weird but cool and we won't be interrupting each other and the little boxes will keep fighting for for top billing <laughs> I, I don't know if we're not going to interrupt each other we're going to try though um okay so let's dive in what are we talking about today for mrea and you guys thank you so much for continuing on the mrea session uh, i know we started strong we're dwindling with our with our attendance here but you guys here are the ones that are going out on listing appointments and really implementing what is in this book so i applaud each and every one of you thank you for being here okay awesome so today guys we are starting on page 249 with the big heading that says money money that one money is this anyone's first time on the call today just so we know um how to set the the one hour with you uh yeah adrian uh this is my first time but um I i'm a brand new agent but i did start reading the book i just haven't got to 249 just yet all right, well, we're going to we're going to skip ahead for you today, but we encourage you to go back and read this book. How many times? Uh, 145. <laughs> I'm as on many times as you can. This book, let's so Adrian and everybody else, just to kind of recap on how we we do our MREA series, we are doing three days a week and we're taking pages out of the book and we're dissecting them and going over the most important and relevant pieces of the book to share with you. And today we have a lot of pages that we're covering in a very short time. We are going, Brooke and I went through this and we picked out the, the best pieces to go over with you today to take action in your business today. So hopefully everybody's okay with that. What I'm going to tell you is please read every single one of these pages. Don't skip like we're going to be skipping and go back and reread, highlight, and then ask your mentors, your leadership in your office, what they're doing around these pages because I promise you they're doing something. Don't recreate the wheel. Okay, let's dive in about money. What does it say? There's, you need a lot of it. <laughs> the first quote, if we work hard to make it, we need to work doubly hard to keep it. And what's important about that is we really need to dig into our budget model and our economic model. And when we were just at Masterminds, one of the things that came out is the person who was with us said, hey guys, guess what? Not one of these parts of the models lives alone. If you don't have your economics, you're not gonna get your lead gen. And guess what? If there's no leads, there's no budget and there's no org model to worry about, right? And they all twist around each other. Well, you know what, Laura Strunk, who is a team leader in our region here, she said it the best, and I don't know where she got it from, but it absolutely made complete sense. How many of you, when you go to a restaurant, what do you get when you sit down? Like, what's the first thing you order? What's the, what's the first thing that you get? It's a menu, right? Menu. It's a menu. And what do you do from the menu? You pick and piece what you want. Most of our agents treat this like a menu rather than a model, and they don't follow it like a system or a model. And that's why so many people have the ups and the downs and the, what am I doing wrong? And why do I have to recreate myself? If you, anybody you hear on stage, and if you guys have been to events, you'll hear. What they'll tell you is, well, I could have been on stage 10 years ago, but I didn't follow the model. As soon as I decided to commit to this book right here, which is still relevant, I skipped the word that's on the shirt. It's still relevant. Once they actually truly dove into this book and just followed it, what, what do you think happened? Well, they got on stage and usually people who are on stage are doing what? I know okay. Peter wants Peter, Peter, Peter wanted to say finger. Peter wanted to respond to that. I know it. Killing it. You're killing it. Uh -huh. Performing. Yes, right? 
So, so that's why that's why we're here, and that's why we're going to really talk to you about the important things and and say things that you've probably heard already. But we want a few things to stick today. So even if it's just one thing, we're okay with that. Let's go through these pages, and the first one is sticking to your budget model and controlling your costs. Now, I know a lot of you have been on with us since COVID started, and the first thing Gary told us to do was what? Anybody remember? Around the budget. Go ahead, Mary. You're muted. I okay. said to, to look through and uh, eliminate expenses that we don't have to have. Yeah, and he gave us a really great tip of A, B, and C -ing our expenses, right? Does anybody remember the A, B, and C? Your C are the things that you really don't need. You really don't need, but you have. The Bs are, you think you need it. Nice to have. It's nice to have. And your A's are, you must have in your budget line. Go through your budget again, through this number 14 here on page 250, sticking to the budget model and controlling your cost. Go through your budget again. Make sure you have your A, B, and C's marked. Because guess what? I bet you have a lot of C's in there that crept in in the last two years that, I know I know it's personally, it's happened to me. Like when COVID happened, I got rid of all my subscriptions. I got rid of Audible, which I got back because I'm in my car more. Uh, I got rid of my Peloton subscription which I got back and I don't ride the Peloton. So that's when I probably should get rid. Anyway, um, you guys know what I mean. There are some C's in there that you could get rid of too. So number, first thing for today, first challenge for today, go through what you're spending your money on and mark it A, B, or C. Everybody okay with that challenge? Okay, let's keep moving on. I love that. I love that. And you know what? Print your business credit card statement. Ooh, I have that. Yeah. Ooh, or print your business checking. So that brings us to the next thing. How many of you have your account separated? I, I see, see three hands. I see three hands, but we have like five people on video. Yeah. So oh, there we go. All right, four. So so why is that important, Brooke? Who's been audited? I mean, besides other things, you ever well, been it's audited? It's not even just about but being audited, is it? No, it's but about you, running a business. It is this. You're a business owner, right? We are business owners. You want to separate that when you start to have everything in one dumping ground, and then you're trying to, is this for my business? Is this for personal? Where does this go? And you're trying to map those things out. That makes accounting difficult and messy. Um, I, you know, when I'm at the market center, I had it set up where our commissions went into one account, um, our expenses were in another account, and our tax holdings were in another account. You know, so what was going in and coming out, I think Bonnie's the one who actually taught me how to set things up that way. So that way everything was so separated and I knew what was coming in, but I, more importantly, I knew what was going out and I saw where I was. Yeah, you know what, that segue is right into what you have right there. So. Some of you may have come to our last event before COVID hit in, in March of 2020, and it was the Profit First Michael uh, McCallowitz event. Anybody there? Anyone on this call at that event here in Rhode Island? Nobody? Oh, you missed that. Really? It was 500 of us right before COVID. And like the next day, we shut down everything, by the way. It was March 11th, 2020. We had Michael McCallowitz the author of this book, Profit First, come in. And why we're mentioning this is because this book teaches you how to pull your accounts and, and allocate your funds to the right accounts and run your business like a business, like this model in this book says. So recommendation for today, Profit First, Michael McCallowitz. But I will tell you, if you stick around for the rest of the class, this book that, I mean, it's worth a lot of money right now. Because a signed. lot of money. That's not the author, by the way. That is Brooke and I. We signed this book for you guys. <laughs> so we're going to give it away at the end of today's class. Uh, because <laughs> you got to be here, though. We have, you have, we have to stay. Fan. We have one fan and we're okay with it. Yes, but you have to be here. <laughs> yes, you have to be here. You have to be here. So Profit First, uh, if, if you don't get it today, download on Audible or order it on Amazon. This is gold. 
I wrote that in here, actually. My th this book is gold. Go do it. I wrote so. something ridiculous. You'll okay. have to see if you want. All right. We're moving on from, from our budget. Let's go. What's next? So profit first. We're going to stay focused now. Okay. So now we're staying focused. Profit first. You. Yes. Well, hold on. Let's, before we get to that, that point, let's talk about you. I love this. I have this in here. Your ability to maintain your focus on the 20% of the business that matters most and your ability to maintain some balance in your life. So you always have the energy you need to pursue your goals. How many of you are feeling a little burnt right now? Right. We're getting there. We're busy. It's a little different. So agents, brokers, we're tired. Everybody's like we're tired. Hi. Anybody else feel that way? Anybody else feel like there's just some some grumpiness out there that we need to shake out of the world, right? Like shake it up and get go. Uh, we're we're gonna get there, by the way. We will we will get through the grumpiness onto smooth sailing. But the only way we're gonna get to smooth sailing is how focus, focus. focus. You, <laughs> you can't sail a boat and not focus. That's why I don't have a sailboat. That's pretty good. Um, so. If you don't have your 20%, and we're gonna show you some of the charts and the uh, figures that are in the MREA, but if it's if you're it's your 20%, it's on your calendar. And if it's not your 20%, it doesn't belong there. Right? Did you do you guys hear that one? 20%. Bonnie heard it. Bonnie heard it. Yep. It's not something they haven't heard before, right? It's our goal to action, our 20%. We're gonna throw wow. out some wow. silly words, right? We've got it, let's speak in colorisms 411 like how do we get to those goals oh the name of the book was profit first juliet so there's a great graphic it's figure seven and, and if you have the book in front of you turn to page 254 if you don't don't worry guess what brooke's going to share with you right this second the graphic so uh, let's talk about this graphic really quickly how many of us sometimes Oops. not all the time sometimes are in this top graph where it says unfocused where you get caught in the showings meetings open houses trainings 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 cmas corona you have one today signs leads inspections we're all over the place and it could all be in one day anybody fall in that that unfocused realm ever oh the second you walk into the market center because your friend's there and now you want to talk to them right <laughs> right but now that we're like back in person and belly to belly sometimes it gets a little more squirreled right <laughs> so the whole point of this graph can anybody tell me what you think the point of this graph is like why do you think this is such an important graph for us to look at well because listings leads and leverage is the most important that we should be doing so, you know, instead of being multitasking and doing all the things that we we know we have to do when we're running around like chickens with our head cut off, we know what we need to focus on. You, yes, you hit nail on the head absolutely perfectly and you get a high five um, because that's exactly it. What would your day look like if you just got those three things done in the morning and then everything else just fell into place? your meetings, your education, your uh, CMAs. If you were able to lead generate in the morning, set your listing appointments up right after that and your leverage and follow-up right after that, your day could be done by noon. By noon. That's a lot of social time. And your social time is guess what? Lead generation time. Because if you're able to go out to go golf more, to be able to work in a garden club, to be able to go participate in your community, to give back, you're actually doing more work by, by saving yourself time. Does that make sense, guys? It's just staying focused on that 20% to start. And you know what happens? I don't know if anybody, if this happens to anybody else. January is everybody is focused. Like, for the first two weeks of January, everybody has their calendars like set. They have the gym schedule in there. You the can't get a packed. treadmill. You can't right. get a treadmill. Two weeks. Two weeks this happens. And then what happens, guys? Then you can get a treadmill week three. Then you get <laughs> open space at the market center. Then you don't have to wait at the printer. Then by by March, it's like a cricket. <laughs> I hear crickets. I hear crickets here. I So anybody here? Yeah. <laughs> So the point of this is to get consistent in the focus. 
get consistent in the 20%. Imagine what could happen to your world if you got boring, if you got so boring with your day, you knew every single day from nine to 12, you were doing lead generation, listing appointments and follow-up. What could happen to your world? What happens to your business? What happens to your time off? What's time off? Well, we're gonna talk about okay. that a little later. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. But that's a really good graph. Right. Really, really good. Graph. And it shows you that you only have two choices when it comes to your focus, focused or unfocused, right? That's it. There's two choices. There's no in between when it comes to I'm kind of focused. You are or you are not. End of it. And there's some great worksheets we have. And they're, they're also at MREA Inc. We've got them here. I will make sure. Oh, these are in the um, folders and the different workbooks, but let me show you guys this one again, because I think this one is important for you guys to see. And it's the goals worksheet. Oh yeah. Right. So this is your 20%. How many have read the one thing? So fun. Oh, you want to tell them that we're bringing it to the region? Oh my God. Yeah. We're bringing the one thing to the region. So Stay we're doing tuned. a series like this right in October during business planning with the one thing. So keep an ear out, an eye out, get on that series because we're going to be going over business planning, the one thing style in October. Before that, let me just mention before that, right after this series, is it July we're doing it? Oh, yeah. Oh, shift of summer. Shift. Summer of shift. Summer of shift. S O S. We're doing an S O S summer of shift series, and that's going to be coming out in July. So, guys, if you're here, you're going to want to go there. So, again, keep an eye out for it. All right. So, your your goal to action twenty percent system here is again one of these sheets that I don't know. Screenshot it, write it down, draw it yourself. Look at the book in front of you. Make some highlights. Goal to what's that? Goal to what? Yeah, I see that, Bonnie. Action. 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 You know, my word for 2022, if you've been on any of my calls, you know that my word for 2022 is action. And nothing we do in these, we could come to these classes, listen to Brooke and I babble back and forth and joke and kid and, and teach. Uh, yet nothing will work if we don't take action on anything that we're looking at or we're implementing. So you have to implement and take action on it for this to work. So this sheet is really important. Goal it's in your book. to action. Yeah, it's in your book on page 256. Well, 255 is the graph. Yeah. Is the graph. And then the um and then the worksheet to work through it is on 256. I think I got a newer. Yeah. Yeah. So so let's let's just look at what the breakdown of this is. And I'm just going to read it to you. you guys probably have it in front of you, but here, here's the thing. And I want you to do this right now. Even if you don't know it and you're guessing it, write down your key goals and the action steps to achieve them. Yep. We're doing an activity right now. Scribble, scribble. Write down your key. What do you think key are? What does key mean? Most important. Most important, your big rocks. Your top 20%, what are your key goals and action steps to achieve them? Now, you don't have to get this all done, but start writing it right now. Grab your piece of paper. If you're driving, don't do this. Once you do that, I then want you to find time in your calendar right now. It could just be one thing, you know, because we don't have a lot of time. I want you to pick one of those goals you wrote down. Pick a time in your calendar to include the steps of the, the action steps that you need to accomplish that goal. And it might not just be one day. It might be multiple days to accomplish it. So take a minute, pick one goal that you just wrote down in your calendar, put the action steps you need to complete to accomplish it by. So example, you want to add 10 names to your database by today. What would you have to do? After this class, put time block 30 minutes to add 10 names to my database 
in command or your CRM to that. Does that make sense? I'm, I'm using a very small goal, but you, you could get what I mean from that, right? If it is to close 10 listings, you might need a little more in your calendar to get to that goal. Any questions on that? It seems simple, right? It seems, I, let me tell you something, Laura. Um, can I move this? Yeah, you want to stop right. the share? Yeah. Okay. Laura and everybody, my husband, and I've mentioned him a couple of times on, on our call. My husband is a mortgage broker and everybody I talk to tells me, oh my God, your husband remembers everything. How does he, how is he so efficient? He knows when to call for this, that, ABC, whatever, right? If you ever saw my husband's calendar, his calendar has action item after action item, like back to back to back to back. So he will have uh, Brooke Silva mortgage contingency in two weeks, call her today to check in. He will have the next day, if, if Brooke doesn't answer his call, he moves it over the next day until that task is complete. He doesn't take it off his calendar until it's complete. Now it's amazing and being his wife ultimately frustrating because if I have a task that's on that list, he contacts me every day until it's done. So I don't like that. I don't like that for you. Yeah, but it's amazing. He really is so great at what he does because of his calendar, not because of what's up here. I mean, he is smart. He is always oh, very smart, but he lives like by his calendar like you he and lives, I do. He lives by that calendar because of tasks. So imagine if you put every task you need to complete in your calendar and just get rid of it when it's done. Would that make your life simple? Hmm. I know it has helped me for sure. It has absolutely helped me. Um, I will never tell him that I use his. Nope. 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 We're never <laughs> his way. giving him credit. We're crediting the MREA. <laughs> yes. Yes. He's just following a model that we taught him. Yes. All right. Let's, let's go right on to page 256. This is a really good page. If you're following along on your book, like dog air this or rewrite it or photocopy it, photocopy it, <laughs> whatever you've got to do. This is a really, everybody have their book? <laughs> We're good students. We're good. Yay. All right. Hi, Laura. Uh, so on page 256, it says the three questions it will answer are, and what it is, is your 20% action, right? So what do I slash we want? What's your goal, right? That's your goal. What do you actually want from this? What's the end result? Number two, what do I, we want it by, right? Have a date. If we don't have a date, what ends up happening? Eh, I'll get to it when we get to it. You'll get to it when you get to it. And then what ends up happening? Something else gets around it. And then that laundry Tomorrow effect never happens. comes. Tomorrow yeah. never comes. And you know what, Corinna, they say that if you don't take action on something within the first 24 hours, the percentage of you actually doing it after that time frame drops significantly. I think it's like 85%. Like you have a 15% chance of actually doing it if you don't do it within the first 24 hours. That's taking action on an item. But if you set this plan with a goal and a date for when, you're more likely to hit that goal. And then the third question is, what has to happen for me or us to have it? What are the action steps that actually need to have that happen to break it down for this, for you to have it, to have that goal? And then um, there is the goal to action worksheet that, that Brooke was just mentioning on this page. It's so simple. If you don't wanna write in your book, you don't have to, you can though. This is your book. Yeah, you own this. This is your book. Unless you're lending it from the library at the market center, but you own this. So if you want to use this as a worksheet today, right now, and put your name, the date, put a goal that you just wrote down a few minutes ago, pick a date that you want to accomplish it by in the action steps you want to do it. Use this time as an action workshop, right? We're not here just to, we're not, we don't like to lecture, actually. We're not a lecture team. 
We're here to work with you and show you ways to take action on these things. So use this right now, like right now. We'll hit pause for 30 seconds. Is there a pause button on us? Probably not. We can try to pause. <laughs> There's no pause button on us. But take some time just to fill this out really quickly. Because we gotta keep we do have to keep moving because we only have a half hour left. And you know what's funny? I love pages. this. I love this master task list. My friend Alan Rice calls this his grass catcher. Oh, tell us more about that. So the what, 80, what page are you looking at? I'm I'm sorry, I'm on page 257 while you're writing down your goals. And I love this because so my 20% is if I do these things, other things become non-necessary, right? They could go away mm -hmm. or I don't need to do it anymore. So I'm one of those people that if it's in my brain, it will chew and chew and chew. It's like a worm in there destroying the rest of my world. So I have this master task list of things that need to be done and I keep it separate. We call it the grass catcher. So it's all the things that need to be caught so they don't live in my brain and freak me out. But are they part of my 20%? So as soon as I write it down, I look at my big goal and I say, does this, if I did this, would it negate something else? No, then it goes in the grass catcher and it stays here. When I can get to it, I get to it. And that I love that he named it that for me because that's so visual. I was like, put it in the grass, it's gone. And if I need to do it, it will be important at some point. So I love that 80%, the rest. Big rock mentality on that one. It's the sand that fills in around. You know what's crazy is that most of us, and I could speak for myself, some sometimes get caught where? <laughs> in the 80%. We get caught in the busyness of our day and it takes us three hours to do a market analysis that probably could have taken us, you know, three minutes to give to a leverage department to do it for us. Right. And we could have made more money if we were able to just leverage that off and stayed focused on our 20%. But it was easier. Stay with me here because some of you might, might feel this way too. It was easier to stay in the 80% and stay busy, even though those tasks did not make me more money. Oh, but it's hard to think that way when you're in the 80% because you're busy, right? If I'm busy, I should be, I should be making money. Mm, but we're going to show you what your actual hourly wage is after. Yeah. I'm really excited about that. One. And how many of you have heard this? I do, it's not, we yeah. do, they do. And now they've added a fourth one. Has anybody heard the fourth? It does it. Ooh. Right. So what is the technology or the tools we're using so that it does it right so it's i do we do they do it does it i like it and you can have it does it at any step in those i love that bro isn't that hot yeah mm -hmm. i love that sometimes i listen all right there's a lot of good stuff on these pages so we're going to keep going page 258 you want simple it's here. Why do we why do we like to overcomplicate things? I don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, but we do. We get caught up in it. There's a simple daily worksheet for you. Again, rip it out of here. Copy it. Write it down. Create a new have somebody create a document for you. Oh, guess what? It's already created. Yep. M R E A. -E. It's in here. It's in your your what is it? Drive. Drive. <laughs> the drive. This is the tech girl. I'm not tech. Me, don't even know what a drive is. I drive with a car. Um, anyway, daily worksheet is in your drive. Make sure you download that if you want to start simplifying your world. That's it. That's it. That's all I got to say on that. It simplifies, Simplify. right? Because then we're never going to be able to get to that leverage piece of hiring people for the we do to the they do if you don't even know what you're doing. Yep. Right. That first hire is not going to be as successful as they could be. If you can identify the I do, we do, they do, and the it does it. Right. Let's get you through those. Why don't we skip to the page 262 that has the breakdown of the yeah, points yeah. to remember? Yep. Which ones do you want to highlight? Protect your lead gen focus time. What is the one role of a realtor? Like, what is your one job? Yep. I saw it on like seven people's mouths here, lead generate. Generate. <clears throat> but you know, sometimes we say just lead generate and we kind of pause and we get like, we, we get like stuck because like, what, what does that generate? actually mean? Like, what does lead generation actually mean to me? And you know what? A lot of, a lot of agents, when we say lead generation, they're like, I'm not going to sit on a, buy a phone and call and lead generate. That's not who I, that's not what I'm going to do. Anybody on here like that? Well, I'll tell you, Gary Keller's like that. 
Yeah, he doesn't cold call. He, he won't. He does not cold call. Do you know what he does? He uses the people in his influence around him to have conversations for him and with him to lead generate. How many people do you have around you that you could have a conversation with, a conversation, whether it is they're a business owner and you're going to highlight them and you want to talk to them about what business to business looks like, whether it be a friend or a family and just say, hey, you know what, it would be unprofessionally not to tell you a little bit what's going on in our local market. Let's have a conversation. That's lead generating, by the way, guys. It does not have to be. I need to be scripted. Be my boy, boy, boy. I, need, I need to wait for the perfect script to do my lead generation. It's not. You do you. And you could pick three things that you love doing. Three. And if you focus on those three things that you love doing and you go out and do those things and talk to people while you're doing those things, that's lead generating. And what do you think that's going to do with or for your business? The thing is, is we get paralyzed in the lead generation. Oh my goodness. I don't know where to go from here. Right, it's a dirty word. It's and you like a dirty word. They, and, people, their yeah. shoulders go, when I say lead gen to people, all of a sudden we'll be having a great conversation and it's like this. Yeah, I do my lead gen. <laughs> right. And I'm like, wait, let's talk about it. We should call it something else. <laughs> right. We do. How, yeah. How's your peopling going today? How's your community building going? Are you building a community today? What does your community look like? Does that feel better? Like what, like I hate the word database. I rather say, I would love to add you to my community. I say membership base. Membership base, say, do what works for you and what feels right for you. All right. Yeah, did you have one on here? Cause I have one other I love on here. I mean, I love all of them, uh, which, which is the next one you like teamwork with rock and roll because no matter where you are at your business there are so many ways to leverage out but what we notice is a lot of our people are, I can do it faster because I don't have to show someone to do it how I want to do it. We got it. We got to get over that. Right. I know Sandra, I know friend, we talk about it often. I am it's so okay. guilty of that. It is, but is it worth your time? And we're going to dig into that to show you guys your hourly rate. Because I think once you see what your hourly rate is on what you're doing, you may throw up a little in your mouth and go, yeah, I am ready to give this to someone else so that my hourly wage goes up and I am making more and getting bigger and growing if that's where you want to be. So can you read what Laura has in, the, in there? Because I think it's a great Which level. one? Can you point? Oh, okay. So Laura says, I need to have a goal in order to lead Jen happily. A goal, okay? Example, I'm going to pop by five businesses today, or I'm going to call five funeral homes to talk about how I can help them with their clients, or I'm going to call 20 sphere of influence and tell them to change the battery in their smoke detectors, not put out just a social post. I have been dropping off soap that I make to people, and then our horses are a great reason to invite people over to, or a hike behind my house, something that pulls her people in to what she enjoys doing. Your community is around what you enjoy doing. Thank you so much, Laura, for, for sharing that, because those are, that's exactly what we're talking about. Pick the things that you already love, and it actually becomes fun, and it's not a job anymore. It's more of like exciting of how I could go out there into my community and help. Like, it would be unprofessional me if I didn't go out and help somebody today. I need to go help, right? Yeah. All right, awesome. What else? So is everybody cool on that? Can we go on to receive how to receive a million? million? We're at the top, we're at the top kind of top ish of the calendar, because if you guys were on uh, in the earlier sessions, we know that there is a fifth, a fifth one at the top of the triangle. Does anybody remember what it is? That's not in this book, but is in the new MREA. Yeah. What did they add? So we're at receive. What's the one right above it? Get a million. What was it? Get a million. No, nope, so it's think, earn, net, she receive, give. and give, give a million. Give, give a million. Like that one jazzes me up. I know that word is, is like an older word, but it jazzes me up to think about giving a million, right? If you were on our earlier call, you guys know that I have a goal set 
that I, that I'm excited about and giving a million, like that's my passion. That's what I want to get to as quickly as possible. And I would do whatever it takes to get there because I want to be able to give, just give it. So just a little side, side, side note on me, my grandmother, I'm from a very large Italian family and my grandmother, <laughs> my grandma, Rosie, uh, she, every time I would see something on her, let's say a ring, I'd be like, grandma, I love that ring. It's so pretty. You know what she would say to me? <laughs> Anybody else have a grandma like this? You like it? You want it? Oh, it's yours. It's yours. You like it? You want it? That's my grandmother. You pretty? You like it here? That is my mindset on so many. My husband's like, are you serious? You're going to give your sweatshirt to somebody right now? And I'm like, well, they're cool. Yes, they liked it. They, I, I, they want it. <laughs> that's like giving a million is that's my passion. Like I can't wait for that. And that's what makes me come to work. And it doesn't even feel like work, by the way, work every single day to say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to be able to give as much as I can today, because I know tomorrow I could give a little more because the next day I could give a little bit more than that. And, and that's what drives me. So little, little side. And I enjoy giving some of your money away too. You it's do. Fun. Yeah. 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 You do. Cause you don't have to have a million to give a million. No. You just got to give yeah. with the resources yeah. you have Yeah. or other people's. All right. So what's the difference between active and passive income growth? I love this. So let's ask our friends at home because I know, I know this. So what is active income for you guys as of today? The active doing and passive is, is your profit share. Bonnie's got it. OG for the win, right? That's your profit share or other, what are other ways passively you can get income in this world? Go ahead, Mary. Uh, referrals, referrals, yeah. You know, passive is not doing work for that money, right? So your active income is you're working for the money and passive is the money's working for you. Right. That's the actual definition of it. So what else could be passive for you? Let's let's have a list of it. How about how about rental income? Yep, Darlene, put that in. Oh, there you go. Yep, what yep. else? Can you be an owner investor in other entities? JV, mm -hmm. joint ventures. What else? Profit share. Is that all we got? Anybody else have something they're passively getting income from in this world? All right, that's good for today. Yes, let's keep going. How many of you, oh, did I skip a section? I think, I, nope, that was passive. Okay. As of today, how many of you feel like your business is running you and you are not running your business? Why do we think that is? Does somebody want to be brave and tell me why they think? We're on page 266 if you're following along book style wise. I can tell you. It's Go ahead, Mary. I think I'm not leveraging enough. And I've learned um, over and over. This series, by the way, has been very, very good. And a few times they've talked about leveraging and I, I happen to have a very good uh, transaction coordinator who's I know would do more and more, but I tend to almost without thinking something comes up in an email and I just take care of it, take care of it. Uh -huh. And, um, and I, to the point where I hope I'm not hurting her feelings because she's wonderful. <laughs> so I think I have to take advantage of that. You know what? I, th I think you take the think out of that and you're right. You do. Yep. Take the, th take the think out of that sentence and you're right. Yeah. <laughs> does that make sense, Mary? It does. Yeah, it does. You, it you does know, we're sense. actually going to, we, we are going to dive into what you're at. We're going to, everybody is going to know what their hourly rate is today. You excited about that? I'm excited about that. You're every the 19 of us on are going to know how much an hour it costs us to be in business or, or we make in business. So before we get there, we're on page 266. It says working on the business instead of in the business. Mm -hmm. number, number one, you must gross a lot more than a million a year. Mm -hmm. Now that might sound overwhelming right off the bat. Like right off the bat, that might sound overwhelming. You chunk that down 
and you figure out how to get there when you get there. That's a, the main point of why we write down the goal in a time specific time frame. You must hire someone who can run the business at the level you did. Now, one of the key points in the previous section talked about cul-de-sac talent versus, oh gosh, you know. Oh, how do they word it? Cul-de-sac, capacity versus cul-de-sac, right? Cul-de-sac talent is uh, somebody who's complacent, who's just going to, to do a yes, sir. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. yes, just just yes, yes, yes to work. When you hire up and have hire the capacity level person, kind of probably who Mary works with, with your transaction coordination, what that person can do for you is let you focus on your 20% that ends up making you more money rather than focusing on that 80%, right? right that's talent. Yeah, that's your talent. That's not just an employee, that's talent, right? Yeah. So let, let's talk about the journey from working in your business to working on your business. There is a figure, it's figure five on page 267. I think Brooke's gonna mm -hmm. pull it up here for us, just so you can see, is it on oh, here? Is that it? Oh, I it's on here, but if you have your book, it's page 267, figure five. And it has a lo lovely little graph or figure that talks about how much you should be working in your business as a beginning agent to becoming a manager and becoming an owner. So when you're starting as an agent, you're working in your business to set and do standards. And what I mean by that is getting comfortable being boring. Set your standard and do that standard every single day. Basically, the McDonald's model. They do the same thing every single time for French fries. You get the same French fries in Florida that you would in Rhode Island. How? They set a standard and a system around it. So that way, every single time a French fry goes through the system, the end result is what? Delicious. The same. The same. I wouldn't say delicious. But it's the same, Bonnie. Yes, it's the same. Whether you like McDonald's or not, you understand. <laughs> you understand they have a system, a model in place that they have done over and over and over again and duplicated it. So anybody anywhere that owns a McDonald's franchise can produce that product. Is your business running that way? Does your buyer that you're working with today get the same experience the buyer that you worked with a month ago? Do they get the same exact experience? They should. If not, this is where you're starting to set and build your standards. That's where you're working in your business. So if part of your task list, if we go back to that task list, is creating your buyer experience, creating your seller experience, that's what we're talking about creating your lead generation experience, what you're doing, you get consistent and comfortable and bored, like really just bored because you do it so much every single day, you end up being a master of it, right? And when you master it, that's when you can hand it off to someone else. That's right, that's when you start becoming a manager and you maintain your standards and then you start sharing them. Now somebody else could step into your shoes and do what? Make the same French fries that you just made. Do the same exact thing at any point in your career. If you have to go on a vacation for two weeks, a month, two months, somebody could do that for you. But right, but, but right now we're in this like, you know, that remember that graphic of unfocused? We stay there for too long until we're, we have that like switch that goes off. I'm like, oh, what if I what if I did just stay focused? You know what's great too is we always hear from people who are like, I finally made the right first hire. Yeah. Why did I wait so, so long? long. <laughs> Why? And guys, if you didn't see this in the chat, this is opportunities. This is opportunities in command. And if you haven't played in there, or you haven't been coming to our Thursday calls, we're in it right now. Opportunities is your standard operating manual. How do I give the same experience to buyers or sellers every time? And how do I never forget one of those steps? And better, how do I show someone else how to do those same exact things and become scalable? That's what opportunity, opportunities is these two chapters. 
Yeah. And by the way, when you do master it and you get to that point where you know exactly how your system works for every single buyer, every single seller and every single lead generation opportunity, it becomes fun. Because so many times, especially there's a book that I absolutely love too called The E-Myth Revisited. In that book, he talks about an amazing story about a girl who opened a pie shop because she baked pies with her aunt growing up and she loved the experience of baking pies with her aunt. So she opened a pie shop, why not? She loved baking pies. Well, fast forward and she actually, actually by the time that her business was failing, she despised pies. She despised just even putting it together. And, and when the author w- sat with her and said, well, let, bring me back to why you started this what ended up happening was she didn't have her system, her models and tools connected and she hated one aspect of it. You know what aspect of it she hated? The business part. The part that you had to hire employees, that you had to rent a space, that you had to get a bookkeeper, that you had to manage all these things. She didn't like that, but she liked the pie. She didn't realize that by loving to make pies, she had to add all these other things onto her world, world. But by the time they were able to peel back all the onions and say, okay, well, if you hire the right person to run your business the way that the back end should be run, what can you do? I could focus on making pies. And what do you love to do? Make pies. And guess what happened? Good pies. Her entire business shifted around and she has franchised herself out and she loves baking pies again. And it's, it's a happy thing, but it could have gone down the road and some agents go down this road of it's just too much. It's just too much going around, going on all the time. I, I never know what to do, when to do, how to do. Yet, if you're able to just focus, like we're talking about with these steps, it really does become loving pie making again loving why you got into this business in the first place. So I suggest that, I know we suggest a lot of books, but put it, put it on the list for the future, the E-Myth Revisited. Okay. And then the last part of this graph is becoming an owner of your business. And you're really working on it the majority of the time and in it a very small piece. You're working on it to build it, to grow it, to let it work for you. And you're working in it in a very small piece. That's when others are doing it, excuse me, for you. That's the I do it, we do it, they do it. it and then it does it. And then it. And then it. All right. All right. So let's talk real quick about active versus passive. Cause I just want to make sure just because it's passive doesn't mean it's set it and forget it. You never have to babysit or look at it. If you want profit share, you have to work and listen for the cues and find the people who are interested in our world and get them into a right place, right? You want referral money? You've got to make connections and network with people. And then you've got to do the actual referral itself, right? So passive is passive, but it's not set it, forget it, walk away. Just wanted to make sure that we were clear on that. Um, Oh, I want to go right into I do too. 70. I do. I want to, that's why. We have 10 minutes left. All right. Let's, let's get to who wants to know how much they make per hour. I'm going to grab my computer. I do. I do. Are you scared? <laughs> the first thing you need to know is what, <laughs> how much did you net in 2021? Everybody just did their taxes or is in the middle of doing it. I'm sorry. I know that that even word just like cringe people. And mm-hmm. I might have someone dropping off in a minute once I just said that word, but And how much did you net, not talking gross, not your GCI, what did you net in 2021? And if you don't know it, we need to refollow our economic model in this book. Guesstimate how much you netted last year. Write that down on a piece of paper right now. Guesstimate if you don't know it. And if you're brand new, if today's day two, what did you make last year in your other job? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it, how many hours a week do you average? Are you a workaholic and work 60 hours a week? Or do you work 30, 40, 80? What do you work a week? Write that down. Write down your average work week. Corinna, what is it? I got to know. 87. She just did a big like... <laughs> 
Wolf, this is going to be a lot of hours. How many hours are there in a day? 24, 24 times five. <laughs> Who needs sleep? You got that? How many hours a week do you average? Then write down the number 50. So you should have an, one number that is your net number that you made in 2021. Your second number is your average hours you work a week. Your third number, what was my third number? 50 weeks. Oh, 50, I said 50, yeah, 50 weeks. Anybody want to, can me use one of you as an example? Anybody want to share their three numbers? Bonnie. Bonnie, okay. I Give us your three. I'm going to take my calculator out because I'll, I'll, we'll explain this in a minute, but we're going to, we're going to run through it. Okay. Give me your net. Let's see your net. Oh, my Bonnie. net was 152. 52. And what is your average? work week look like hours hours 30, guys. 30 hours 30 hours 30 times 50 it's 1500 wow look at her hourly how much is your hourly bonnie do you know i i didn't figure it out <laughs> can i tell you what is it 101 dollars per hour awesome and i'm worth every penny <laughs> <laughs> And more, by the and way. More. Well, here's the thing, Bonnie. Let's look at this for a minute. What if you hired somebody for $15 to $20 an hour to take care of the transactions that are holding you back from doing a little more community work? What could Actually, happen? I'm in the process of doing that. And what could happen to your hourly wage? That'll go up and I'll have more time. She said it, not me, guys. It will go up and she will have more time. More time. How many of us would like more time? Fewer hours. When, when, we, when we talk about leverage, some people just go to the scarcity of, oh my gosh, it's going to cost me so much money. How am I going to be able to afford that? And it's okay if you're there. Here's the thing. If you have the right person that is working on your behalf, doing that 80%, that you could, and this is going to be up to you, you focus on that 20%, that person is now doubling, tripling, or quadrupling your business the first year. But this is going to be completely up to you because if you hire somebody to do that 80% and you're still not focused on that 20%, you can't blame that person for your business not growing. We have to look in the mirror at ourselves and say, okay, did I do what I needed to do during that 20% to build my business. Because once you do, it's a no brainer to hire somebody to take on some piece of your leverage. Some piece, it doesn't have to be all of it, no. but some piece of it. Make sense guys? All right, I see some head nuts. Yeah, some head nuts. That was an excellent hourly wage. I'm excited for you to see where you go when you have that. Did you guys higher. do your hourly wages, everybody else? Anybody do theirs? You don't have to tell us. Just curious on if you did them. Yeah. Anyone have questions on it? It's pretty easy to figure out, right? Yeah, I mathed. Do you, I mathed. It's amazing. Do you think that you're worth more than your hourly wage? If your answer is yes, what do you think you have to do? Stay in that focus lane. And then leverage, 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 leverage yeah. Bonnie. You're right. Yeah. Stay in your lane. Karina, she's doing it. I got to stay in my lane. Blinders on is what one of my friend Kimber says. She's just, she puts her blinders on when she has that goal to hit and she just goes down the same path. Yep. I'm going to jump right into our next piece. Yeah. So let's, so now you've got that first hire. What is your, who should your first hire be? In, from the book. Admin. 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 What does everybody jump to actually though? What do they do? Buyer's agent. Buyer's agent. Buyer's agent. And are you still working on the 80% or the 20% with a buyer's agent? Right. You're, you're doing everything at that point still, because that buyer's agent you're feeding them instead of taking out some of those administrative tasks. If you go, and I think we shared it before. And if you don't, I'll make sure it's out there in resources. There's something called the task list for megas. And it's 192 things you guys actually do as agents daily in the second part of that list. Your next level 
it's going to tell you all the things you should be pushing off to your admin. And then the admin goes to the agent and, and hires and trains the admin. And then that buyer specialist moves on, trains the next person, the next person trains the next person and so on and so on. And they move up. So you're not, you're, you're training that admin. They're moving up to buyer specialist. You train them and then they train the person beneath them. Does that make sense? So you're, you're not always continually training an admin over and over and over. The seven uh, level concept is in the book. We're going to, we're going to skip through those. So those so you of you that are it. high C's and want us to read every single page and word, I'm very sorry. We're skipping to page 281 for time purposes, because we have for the next six minutes, we want to talk about the MVVBP. I'm going to say that again, MVVBP. So it's page 281. And this is probably one of the most important pages for you to, to look at. I guess they're all important. I don't know. Yeah. I lie. <laughs> they're all Everything. important. But this is another really good one from today's session to really focus on. And the MVVBP is your mission, values, visions, I'm sorry, beliefs and perspective. Let's break that down. What does that mean? Your mission is what does the business look like when you're done? What is your end game? We talked about that already today, but literally I was talking to my hairdresser the other day and she said, you know what? I'm, I'm thinking about buying the salon. What do you think about that? And we had a full conversation about it. And the, the way that I started the conversation is, well, what is your end game? What's your end result of having this business? Have you asked yourself that? Is it to pass on a legacy of your business? Is it to have a certain amount of money in your bank account? Is it to pay for something? What is the end game of getting into real estate? Is it something bigger than that? That's your mission, by the way. We, we, for, we, we skip that piece when we're going through all of these things. I don't know why we do. Maybe it's hard to think about. Maybe it's just hard to like, just put all the pieces together or, or, or know the why. So start thinking about that. Why, why are you doing what you're doing? When is the end that you're excited to pass your business on, sell your business, be done with your business, whatever it looks like. That's the first piece of your mission. The next is values. What is important to you? What is really, really important to you? Now we're talking about this as a book, right? This is a book club, a series. But guys, these are really action items for you to write down right now within the next 24 hours and, and really look at. Talk about it with your family. Do they know what, what your mission is, your end result is for being in real estate? Do they know what your values are? What is important to you, to them? That's the values. Then you have the vision. What will our lives look like along the way? If you had the choice to pick what your life looked like along the way, what does that look like? Do you have that written out? Write it out. Do a vision board. I'm, I'm a huge component of vision boards. Love vision boards. Huge component. I've got a ton. Someone's going to show me one right now. I know it. Yep. Bonnie's got hers that we did. Yeah. Look at that car. Is that a Bentley? All right. So what will our lives look like along the way? Write it out. Vision it out. Oh, we have one minute left. Okay. And we have a giveaway. So don't leave. All right. And the next one is beliefs. The rules we will follow in our business. Those are your beliefs. Yep. What are the rules you will follow in your business? being a great co-broke, whatever that is, write those out. And then perspective, our interpretation of where we are at at any given moment, perspective. What is the right now? Where are you right now? Do you see that you started with the end to get to the now? This MVVBP is probably one of the most important things that so many agents miss don't do or don't look at. I encourage you within the next 24 hours to relook at this page and write yours out. All right, we're, 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 we're dropping. losing we're people. Dropping. All, All right. right. So we are going to give 
profit first away. Remember, you had to be here to win. So I'm going to go grab a ball from the ball thingy. We have numbers. We have numbers. So everybody is numbered. All right. Hopefully you don't pick the one that just left. I'm always on. Drum roll, please. All right. 13. One thirteen. Mary O'Neill. Mary, you won profit first. <laughs> Look, She's not here. Do you want me? She's right here. She's right there. Right here. Oh, I see her. She's waiting. Oh, How sweet. Thank you very much. Oh, there she is. People get this out. Which market center are you with? Andover. Uh, Andover. Andover. Oh. Andover. Oh, nice. Is that, is that Jamie's? Yeah. Oh, Jamie's one of my really good friends. Tell her I said hello. Oh, and we'll get that I will. Out. I'll see her this afternoon, Jen. Yeah. Oh, oh, all right. We'll tell her I said hello and I miss her. All right, guys. Listen, it's a little after three. We have to go, but had so much fun. And I'm so sorry we ran over. We'll see you next yeah. time. Thank, thank you to the dynamic duo. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Excellent. Have a good one. Thank you.